Hello, this is Jim Hargrove, Enterprise Restaurant Business Consultant for Shamrock Foods. And I'd like to continue to talk to you today about what's going on within the four walls of restaurants as dining rooms begin to reopen. Uh, the target's moving around a little bit. Uh, we're seeing some things we anticipated and some things we didn't anticipate. Uh, and so let's talk about that. And what do we mean by crisis communicators? Uh, Pre-pandemic, you could kind of refer to a restaurant operator as the life of the party, if you will, the person that made fun engaging. Um, restaurant operators threw a party every night at work. And, and now the restaurant operator kind of has to act like a designated driver, more, more responsibility, more calmness. And so what are we talking about? This is all about communication. Um, this is a, 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 new, a, a new way to look at hospitality. We've had a lot of inconsistent, broad, kind of vague recommendations from federal, state, county, and city governments, which has made it very challenging for restaurant operators to know exactly what to do. We're kind of stuck between trying to open safely with sanitation and social distancing and still demonstrate hospitality. And what is the new hospitalities, uh, hospitality? And so now owner operators need to think in terms of being a crisis communicator and being an excellent communicator because of this vacuum of specific and actionable direction. But we've got to make this up as we go along to a certain extent and really communicate with our, our guests and our employees and create this sense of calm, this confidence through clear communication. We're gonna do that on websites, social media, in-store marketing, signage, and what Tim Manis is gonna talk about in just a few minutes, which is really critical, and that is uh, employee training. So I've never been a big fan of management by sign. I always preferred pre-pandemic anyway. If a, if a guest had a question, they could go to an employee and have that face-to-face -face interface. Well, here we are. It, it's, it's a different time that we're in. So it may be time for additional signage, at least for the short term, a spread around the restaurant and even outside the restaurant uh, to put customers at their ease. Customers are coming back into restaurants over the last two to three weeks, and there's a certain level of leeriness and even confusion on how do I dine out at a restaurant now? And we need to make sure that we explain that very clearly to our customers coming back in so that they can feel calm and safe and confident and remain as repeat customers. We've talked about new things that we haven't done before, sanitation mission statement, for example, and we have an example of that for you. Potentially, you could write your sanitation mission statement put it up in the lobby or in the front of your restaurant. So as con consumers are coming in, they see that sanitation mission statement, know what you're all about, know how to act. Uh, and, and everyone is a little bit more, has a little bit deeper communication along with that, of course, is core values. And then new and ongoing procedures. Again, this is changing as we go along, but if you haven't already thought it through, maybe a, a high touch item like a menu, are you gonna use single use disposable, laminated and sanitizable menus? or access through a QR code to the phone. These all, all these strategies need to be thought through. Anything that used to be on top of the table, what do we do with that now? We really need to think that procedure through, ketchup and mustard and napkin dispensers, all that kind of thing have to be strategized in the new normal. And of course, we've talked a lot about no touch and low touch, payment, restrooms, door handles, all those kinds of things we really need to be talking about quite a bit. And what we've seen initially, as restaurants, uh, as dining rooms reopen, um, there's some there's some struggles from the operator standpoint, from the consumer standpoint. We're all learning as we go along, and so it's going to take some time to develop these new habits. But we need to be able to show a reasonable effort of social distancing and sanitation. And overcrowding in restaurants is happening to a certain extent. I think there's going to be forgiveness of that for a couple of weeks, but eventually we're going to see the court of public opinion probably not be happy if a restaurant is consistently not showing efforts for sanitation and social distancing. So we really need to think about that so we don't have to have awkward conversations with health inspectors or we see a negative post on social media about our efforts in our restaurant. We believe the table tents are going to become important uh, living documents on our restaurants now. It's a communication piece with our customers. Once we get them through the social distancing waiting uh, and then onto the table and sit down, now we can use these table tents uh, at, to help describe the order taking process and the struggles that we have with masks and what we need uh, for help from our customers. Uh, why our server is standing three or four feet away from the table. This is the new hospitality uh, that ensures everyone's safety and sanitation. Uh, depending on the restaurant, maybe um, the brand could dictate that we're gonna ask on that uh, table tent, one full visit, one full 
order. Can you please have your whole order ready when your server comes so we can minimize the time that the, the server is at your table, but you can still enjoy uh, an experience here at the restaurant. Um, and then QR codes we think are gonna be really important going forward. We, we talked about the QR code uh, to access the menu. There are restaurants that are using the QR code to access online ordering. Customers are doing their own orders from the table right there at the restaurant and their payment. Maybe there's a letter from the owner explaining what's going on in the, in the new normal or an opportunity to sign up for uh, an online uh, newsletter. The tables and chairs have actually been really interesting. It wasn't something we anticipated, but uh, we're obviously in some restaurants, we're seeing tables and chairs, every other set of tables and chairs not being seated to maintain social distancing, which is so important. And so the tables and chairs are there, there's signage that, that it's not available. And sometimes that's working, sometimes it's not. Uh, we have a reasonable number of people in a restaurant, but then a bunch of them go to the bar. Uh, people are so happy and excited to be out of their homes and back into a restaurant. And now we're pushing tables together uh, to create large parties out, out of this excitement. Um, and now we're violating our social distancing protocols and we run the risk of potentially having that conversation with the health inspector or getting nicked up on, on social media. Um, so if that's not working, maybe we need to physically remove those tables and chairs from the, uh, from the dining area so they just can't be seen and used and then we can maintain that safety level, at least in the first few weeks and months. The good news is, and I would encourage you to look at your local uh, government, most areas are uh, encouraging uh, and allowing the, the expansion of outdoor dining areas onto sidewalks and into parking lots. We're seeing uh, um, operators getting very creative in terms of taking those tables and chairs they can't use anymore and moving them outside. This increases your, your, your head count and your, and your top line revenue but it also maintains social distancing. So it's really, really critical to think about that and stay in touch with your local uh, governments. And so now I'll hand it off to Tim Manis and he's gonna talk about arguably the most important part uh, and that is the training and the new way we need to train and, and teach our guest facing employees. Tim? Thank you, Jim. Uh, and you're exactly right. So uh, one of our, Consumers' biggest concerns um, with our new normal is the employees that are preparing food and the employees that are serving them. If you've been involved in uh, pickup, delivery, takeout in the last uh, 60 days, you've had a very short interaction with employees. Um, now we're getting back, restaurants back open, and we're getting back into more of the restaurant experience, although that may be somewhat limited. Um, there's going to be a lot of different questions that come up to the employees. Uh, there's a lot of different nuances and issues that have, have come out of, uh, out of this whole situation. Some of these things that I'm going to talk about, they've, they've been addressed or they've been tweaked a little uh, to be successful. Uh, operators are going to almost need to treat this re-entry into uh, the restaurant experience like a new store opening. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to get a lot of your previous employees back. Um, inevitably, you will have new employees, so there will be some training that has to happen uh, in all these different areas. If you haven't talked to your employees about uh, the fact that they will need to be retrained and there will be some different things uh, included in their day-to-day -day work, um, now is a great time to start working on that. We're going to talk about a couple of those uh, different things today. Um, your customers as well. Customers are going to need to be a little more uh, under patient and understanding, um, you know, and it only takes a, a few bad examples of doing some things wrong to really drive public concern at this point. There's a, there's a pretty heightened awareness. Uh, in all these recommendations and deliverables that we're talking about today, uh, we, we obviously understand that not one size fits all, and every restaurant is going to operate a little bit differently. So, I'm going to talk about um, what we're doing in our restaurant and why. And uh, this is something that you really need to arm your employees with. Um, they're going to be asked a lot of questions that they didn't get before. So they need to be trained and they need to be able to speak confidently and intelligently about uh, whatever the issue may be. Um, some of the things that may come up, um, and we were already seeing some of these in other uh, states that have already opened, but masks, they need to know 
Um, you know, are you guys required to wear a mask? Um, why do you wear a mask? You know, and the the maybe the common response may be because we care about you and your family and your friends. And, you know, we're doing everything we possibly can to keep our restaurant family and our coworkers and friends safe as well. Um, customers are going to be extremely aware of uh, high touch sanitation. Uh, maybe the response to, you know, if a customer says, what, what is the restaurant doing now for sanitation? And maybe the response is, our goal is to sanitize all of our high touch areas uh, after every use. Um, actually, each of us have a area that we must sanitize every 15 minutes. So some really short, simple um, answers. Um, there's going to be things that come up about menus, about gloves, um, about the actual limited menu. You know, where did my favorites go? Uh, the employees need to be trained on how to answer that um, and, un and make the customers aware that, you know, even the supply chain has changed and we may not be able to get all the ingredients to build that menu that we used to have. But we're going to work on that really hard in the weeks and months to bring back your favorites. Um, just build some confidence. Um, large parties, we're going to see some uh, some questions about that. You know, what are the laws? I know it's been uh, it's beaten into all of us every day through the media about what the new rules are, uh, but people forget these things really fast. So they're going to forget what the rules are on, on large parties. There needs to be clear, concise communication from the employees when it comes to that. Uh, let's talk about touchless and low touch efforts. You know, that's really top of mind with most consumers uh, in all areas now, especially inside the restaurant. Um, the takeout and delivery segment has uh, navigated to a really safe way to do that. But consumers have really, they've dramatically changed their behavior. And some of these behaviors are going to remain permanent in our industry. So employees need to be taught uh, how to deal with table side payment, payment uh, maybe not taking cash, um, you know, how do you take payment without surrendering a credit card? It's not going to be the same old check presenter, take it back to the POS system, swipe the card. Um, even serving the food, you know, maybe it's a large tray uh, with all the food brought on it at once where the customers are able to pull their plate off the tray on the jack stand uh, themselves. So a guest initiated plate removal, um, you know, that can avoid the employee having to reach over a group of people possibly making contact with them. Uh, you know, taking the entire order at once from appetizer to dessert, we're seeing that um, happen and be successful in a lot of restaurants just to minimize the, the steps of service. Uh, the difference between clean, sanitized, or disinfected, or sterilized. Uh, typically in restaurants, it's uh, it's hard to completely sterilize something, but it, you absolutely can disinfect. Um, in a very customer-facing world that we live in now, Windex is not a suitable sanitation product. So employees are going to be, uh, they're going to have to be trained to, to walk through some of the chemicals and what they are actually used for. Is it a cleaning chemical, a sanitizing chemical, is it a disinfecting, or does that one product do all three of those things? Um, so there needs to be a real clear, concise uh, method of teaching what product does uh, what things, how long does coronavirus live on surfaces, um, ways to break the viral chain, everybody, you know, this should kind of live in their mind these days. It's the top four ways are hand washing, wearing masks, frequent sanitation in high touch areas and no large gatherings. So those are some of the things that are going to uh, be really, um, customers are going to be really conscious of those types of things. So how to handle questions that could become larger issues. Uh, so you, you don't know who you're talking to. You may be talking to a you know, a social media influencer. You may be talking to the competition. You may be talking to uh, somebody from the media. Uh, never put your employees in a situation where they're not confident in answering the question. So you really need to arm them with the with the proper information so they feel confident talking um, about questions. They also feel really confident getting the right person involved when they can't answer the question. So. 
Um, and some of those bigger questions that, you know, they really need to be uh, answered by a manager, um, an owner, uh, an executive chef, um, somebody um, to that level. Never put the employee in, the, in that bad situation. So, you know, there's a, uh, there's a heightened sense in the restaurant world, you know, you're going to have some challenging guests and they feel like it's um, all these rules are a violation of civil liberties. Uh, they have that right. So we need as operators, we really need to figure out how to deal with these kind of things as they come along. And they will. And we've seen this happen in, in some of the other restaurants already that have opened. Um, you know, the owner and the operator, they have their right to protect their business and their customers and their employees. So again, some basic training, making sure that the employee does not have, feel like they have to answer every single question. They know how to go and find a manager owner to help them um, navigate through that. These are some of the new habits that are um, happening in our industry. So employee uh, training, real big one. Um, with the employee piece, I'll, I'll uh, finish up. With this, you know, we, we always say safety equals confidence, confidence equals relaxation, uh, relaxation uh, equals repeat visits and good post quarantine reputation. I did want to point out um, the shamrockfoodservice.com forward slash coronavirus COVID 19. That's on our website. Um, some really good uh, resources available to everybody on our website. We have some downloadable worksheets from a break-even capacity to some actual signage that can be downloaded and used in your restaurant for the lobby, the host stand, a table tent. We also have a resource for wayfinding. You see wayfinding right now in some of your larger um, stores out there, whether that be Costco, Home Depot, the grocery store teaching people how to social distance, putting signs everywhere. This is the new normal for restaurants as well. And then one of our most impactful tools we have right now is our customer playbook. So uh, we have reopening guidelines listed in all different topics that customers can use out there. So this is a really good thing that you can just bring up, print it off for yourself, read through it, it actually can be used as a training tool um, with your staff. And that is what I have today. Thank you for your time.